In this video, I'll be taking time to look at the applications of dimensional analysis. I'm going to look at just two of them. The first one is to check if a physical equation is dimensionally correct and not the correctness of the equation. So with the idea or knowledge of dimensional analysis, we can verify whether an equation whether a physical equation is dimensionally correct. An example is this. An equation for finding the area of a circle is given as pi r squared. This is the correct relation. This is the correct equation for calculating the area of a circle. But this equation is also dimensionally correct. But supposing somebody made the mistake of writing the area of a circle as 2 pi r squared, do you know that these two equations are dimensionally correct, but the correct relation for calculating the area of a circle is this. Both of them are dimensionally correct. The area has a dimension of L squared because it's a product of two lengths. And these two pi or pi here, they are dimensionless. So the dimension of L squared is also L squared. That is, radius is dimension L. So that shows that whether you write area as pi r squared, or you write the area of a circle as 2 pi r squared, both of them are dimensionally correct. But the correct equation is area equals pi r squared. So when I say we use this um, dimensional analysis to check for the correctness, that is to check if the equation is dimensionally correct and not just the correctness of the equation. Okay, suppose I have, you know, sometimes you'll be given an equation and then uh, you've come across a number of them in physics. One of them is this. And you ask yourself, why is it just s is equal to ut plus half it is square? Am I sure that this equation is dimensionally correct? Suppose you did not remember and you are thinking whether it is actually ut plus half at. Now you have a problem now. How do you cross check? How do you confirm? How do you prove? whether this first equation or the second is dimensionally correct. Now, the rule of dimension is that if you are adding two dimensions or two lengths or two quantities, the two quantities must have the same dimensions for them to be added, meaning that for this to be equal to ut, that is initial velocity times time, plus half times acceleration times time squared, meaning that the dimension of displacement or distance must be the same as the dimension of the product of u and t, and also must be the same as the dimension of a t squared. Recall that half has one dimension. So to show that the dimension of displacement or distance is L, the dimension of initial velocity, that is L t minus one, multiplied by the dimension of time, which is t, plus the dimension of um, acceleration is L t minus two, that's raised to power minus two, multiplied by the dimension of time squared, that is t squared. So when you evaluate this, you discover that the dimension of uh, this remains L. The dimension of this, this multiplied by this gives back um, L. And then the dimension of L t raised to the power minus 2 multiplied by t raised to the power 2 will give you L. So since the dimension of this term, this is uh, since the dimension of displacement is the same as the dimension of the product of initial speed and time, and also the same as the dimension of acceleration times t squared, that shows that this equation is dimensionally correct. Recall that if I were to write the equation as s is equal to ut plus half or plus 2at squared, this is also dimensionally correct. But the correct expression is actually half at squared, not 2at squared. So if somebody made the mistake of writing s equal to ut plus 2at squared, well, by going through this, by applying this um, dimensional analysis uh, concept, you see arrive at the fact that it is dimensionally correct, but um, this is not the correct equation for this uh, equation of motion. So let's say you are given this particular equation, pressure equals density times height or depth times acceleration into gravity. How do we show that this equation is dimensionally correct? Now, pressure on one hand, that is the force of our area, is dimensioned ml minus 1 and t minus 2. I did this in one of my videos on uh, showing how to derive the dimensions of derived quantities. What is the dimension of pressure? So for us to 
you know, confirm that this equation is dimensionally correct, it means the dimension of pressure must be equal to the dimension of the product of density times height to depth times acceleration to gravity. So density is dimension, the dimension of density is given as um, m, that is mass per unit volume, that is m ARS by minus 3, multiplied by the dimension of uh, height to depth, that is L, a type of length, and the dimension of acceleration to gravity that gives you LT minus 2. So when this is simplified, this gives you m ARS by minus 3 times L times L gives me L squared times C raised by minus 2. That gives me dimension of um, m, l minus 1, t minus 2. When you evaluate this, multiply by this, gives you this. Now, this shows that um, since the product of this disease, density multiplied by the height or depth, multiplied by the to gravity, gives you the same as the dimension of pressure. We need to confirm or conclude that this equation is dimensionally correct. So now, that's one application of dimensional analysis. Now the second application of dimensional analysis is to, we can use it, it is used to derive the exact form, exact form of a physical equation. We can use to derive the exact form of a physical equation. But in this case, we cannot use it to derive the constant in these equations that are dimensionless. We have some equations that are dimensionless. I mean, they contain dimensionless constants. An example is this equation for kinetic energy of um, a body in motion, half mv squared. Of course, mv squared is dimensionally consistent with energy, not with its half. So I'll be able to derive this equation using this in dimensional analysis um, concept, but I will not be able to use it to find, to determine the half in that equation. Now, suppose the force acting on the body that moves in a circle, we call that centripetal force, is given by m raised to power a. We want to know the exact form. How does the force depend on the mass of the body, the speed of the body, and the radius of the circular path? We can use the ideas of dimensional analysis to derive the exact form of the equation that relates the centripetal force acting on the body that moves in a circle. The mass of the body, the speed of the body in motion that is along the path and the radius of the path. So which means what we need to know or to determine are the constants A, B and C. Okay, what we we'll do is we we'll first of all substitute or replace each of these quantities with their respective dimensions. The dimension of force is m l t minus the raised to power minus two. The dimension of mass is capital M raised to the power of a. The dimension of speed is l t raised to the power minus one. Then raised to the power b, and the dimension of radius is l raised to the power of c. Okay, so that's the first step in trying to find the exact equation, exact form of the equation that relates centripetal force and these other parameters. Okay, so here we say that um, by expansion, now let me expand this equation. I have MA, MA, that is uh, this uh, B affects the powers of um, L and uh, T. That gives me LB multiplied by minus one times B, that gives you minus B. You know, then um, I have a raised to the power c. Okay, so I can ignore the square bracket. The next thing is to equate the powers of like dimension. Equate, equate the powers, equate the powers of like um, quantity or like uh, dimensions. Okay, so let me start with m. On the left hand side, the dimension of m, the power of m rather is one. Dimension of uh, let's equate the powers of m. This is one equals on the right hand side, you see that the power of m here is a, which means I've got my a as equal to one. Okay, I'm going to also equate the powers of uh, l, which is the dimension of length or distance. So on the left hand side, l is one, and on the right hand side, I have l here. 
and multiply by that's area super B multiplied by area super C. So in indices, when you multiply two indices, you add their powers. I'm going to add B to C, so it gives me B plus C. Maybe I call this equation one. Okay, so let's um, equate the powers of T. On the left hand side, this is minus two equals to on the right hand side, my T is minus B. That gives me minus B. Therefore, B is equal to two. So I've got the value of the constant B. Now, since from equation one, I have B plus C equals one, meaning that C equals uh, one minus B, and then C equals one minus two, C equals to minus uh, one, okay? So with these constants A, B, and C, we are now, we have not arrived at the actual form, expression, equation, relation of, I mean, this uh, equation, that is to say, what um, is actually the equation, the correct equation that relates the force, centimeter force, the mass, the speed, and the radius. So if I replace that, if I replace my constants in that equation, I have F equals um, M, that is A is 1, B is 2, and C is minus 1. That gives me M V squared over R, because R is part minus 1 is the same thing as 1 over R. So with this, I'll be able to derive the exact form of an equation, that is the equation for the centripetal force act on a body that moves in a circle. Okay, now we want to find the dependence of F, that is force, on these other parameters, density, area, and speed. Now, we need to be able to use the dimensional analysis to determine, to derive the exact relationship between these variables, these quantities in this equation. So what we need to do is to find our x, y, z. When we know what our x, y, z are, we'll be able to write down or arrive at the exact relationship between these variables. So the first thing we'll do is to replace the different uh, quantities with their dimension. F is dimension, that is force, ml, t minus two, equals k, with dimension density as m, a raised to power minus three, that's raised to power x, with dimension area, l squared, raised to power y, with dimension speed, lt minus one, raised to power what? z. So what I'll do now is to um, expand using the powers as mx, that is this x is affecting this power of uh, uh, this m here as power one, one times six, that is x, minus three times z will give minus three x, okay? Then this is l times uh, two times y gives me two y, and this z gives me lz dot uh, t minus, uh, minus one times z minus z, okay? Now with this, the next thing is to equate the powers. Equate the powers of like dimensions. Powers of like dimensions or like variables. So on the left hand side, okay, let me start with equating the powers of m. On the left hand side, m has a power of one equal to on the right hand side, m has a power of x, which means with this I found my x as one. Okay, let's equate the powers of l. Okay, on the left hand side, l is also one, the power of x, l is one. Come back to the right hand side. We have L here, minus three. L is by two y. So we have the product of three lengths. And in this case, you add their powers, minus three x plus two y plus z, okay? Now, since I found my x, I can have minus three into one. That is plus two y plus z. This minus three, move to this side, that gives me four, equals two y plus z, which means I can call this equation one. Now, let me write down the powers, equal the powers of t. That gives me on the left hand side minus two equal to on the right hand side I have minus z. Okay, this is t which is minus z, meaning that z equals two. Okay, I found the constant z. Okay, I can make substitution in the equation one to find what y is. So I have four is equal to two y uh, plus uh, z is two. Okay, so I have two y equals four minus two. And then what is my y? y is equal to 2 over 2, which is 1. So I've got the three constants, x, y, z. I can replace the constants in the given equation to have the exact form. Now k is dimensionless. Of course, we told that that means f equals k. x is 1, y is 1, and z is 2. So that gives me f is k 
times density times area times the square of the speed, where k is a dimensionless and a constant. Okay. Now, how about you are given to um, you are given this equation, and they ask you to use the ideas of dimensional analysis to find the unknown that is the dimension of a no constant. Let's see the equation of an ideal gas a over v square, okay, multiplied by v minus b equals m t, okay, and then from this equation we are asked to find the dimensions of a and b. What are the dimensions of constants A and B? Okay, using the ideas of dimensional analysis. Okay, the rule is that for two quantities to be added, you know, they must have the same dimensions. That is, P stands for pressure. So if T stands for pressure, it means that um, A over V squared will have the same dimension as pressure. The same dimension as pressure. Record that V is volume. Okay, V is given as volume. This V is also volume and so on. Okay, since that's the case, we can equate the dimension of pressure is M, L minus 1, T minus 2. I found this before. Of course, you know, pressure is force over area. If we use force and area, you'll be able to arrive at uh, the dimensions of uh, pressure. So we equate A over volume squared to M, L minus 1, T minus 2. Since I'm looking for the dimension of A, Okay, A is into square bracket equals um, the dimension M, L minus 1, T minus 2, multiplied by the dimension of uh, volume. Okay, dimension of volume is L cube. L cube, recall that this volume is squared raised to power 2. Okay, so the dimension of A is now M, L minus 1, T minus 2 times L6. Okay, that is 3 times 2. So that gives me L, M, L is equal to 5, that is minus 1 plus 6, T minus 2 gives the dimension of uh, the constant A. So which means A is not a dimensionless constant, it's a constant with a dimension. Okay.